Hi folks, this week I'm going to do an update on one of our best performing videos on this channel, how to call Java from JavaScript. And I'm going to update it to 2021 using our new Fusion framework. So we're going to take a look at how we can call Java from TypeScript in this case. Uh, you can also do this with JavaScript if you want to, but we're going to focus on TypeScript because that's what Fusion uses by default. So let's jump into code and see how we can do this. All right, so here I want to start that von.com. I've got an empty view with no main layout, and I've configured my project to use Vod and Fusion on Vod 19. So let's go ahead and download the project, and what we'll get is a zip file containing a Maven project. So close this, and I'll navigate to the project in my you know, terminal here, and I'll open it with VS Code. And while that's opening, what we can do also is just start Maven here. So it'll start the build process as we're going through the project and, and seeing what we have here. All right, so if you're not familiar with a Vod Fusion project, there are essentially two interesting folders here. We have the source folder, which is where our Spring Boot application lives. Right now, this is the only file that we have here. So just a Spring Boot launcher uh, and essentially nothing else. In the front end folder, we have the front end of the application. So we have an index uh, TypeScript file that gets run as the entry point. And then we have some other stuff like views and, and stuff that we'll take a look at in just a second. All right, so this is gonna take a little while when it's starting up the first time. So we'll see this content placeholder the same that we had on start.von.com. And what I'll start with is just going into this entry point TypeScript file and just removing everything. So Essentially, we have nothing but an empty TypeScript file and an empty application file. So we have a server running and an empty uh, TypeScript file getting served. And what I want to do is I want to call the server from this TypeScript file. And I'm going to do that through uh, a Vodden Fusion endpoint. So I'm going to create a new file here. I'm going to call this a server endpoint. The name here doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is how we annotate this class. So we need to give it an annotation of an endpoint. And in this case, we're not going to deal with authentication or anything. So I'm going to also say that this is anonymous allowed. And here I'm going to create a method on the server that I want to access from my TypeScript file. So let's create a public method call uh, returning a string called get creating. And here we can just return a string like hello from the server like that. OK, so we'll save that and we'll jump into the TypeScript file here. So what's really cool here is that what happened once we saved that endpoint file is that Vaadin generated an endpoint for us. So it generated the essentially the REST endpoint under the hood. It generated all the types that we need in TypeScript for calling it. And it generated a TypeScript method, kind of an access method for calling that. So we don't need to know the URL or port or anything else. We can call that server method as if it was a TypeScript method. And let's take a look at how we can do that. So uh, we're going to call get greeting. And you can see that we have an autocomplete here. So if we look at what get imported here, you can see that we are importing from generated server endpoint. So we're importing essentially that same method that we had. That's going to be an async method. So we're getting back a promise of a future result. So what we can do then is chain that with a then. And here we'll have our greeting and we can do something with it. So let's do like document.body dot inner text is equal to this greeting. And if we save this, what we expect to see is that we should have hello from the server showing in our body. So pretty cool. So we're calling the server through a TypeScript method that maps directly to this method here, returning the value that we have on the server. Now, of course, we don't usually like to kind of build our apps on this level, kind of setting values on body uh, ourselves. So let's revert this file back to what it was. So we have a uh, routing set up here, which will route us, uh, which will uh, navigate the empty path 
to this empty view. So we can see we have the content placeholder here, which is coming from here. If we change this to hello there, save, we should see that it updates here in a second. All right, there we go. So what we have here is a lit element based view, Vaadin Fusion view. And let's see how we can use that same value in this view. So for that, I'm going to define a piece of state, an internal property like this, and we're going to call it message and initialize it just to an empty string for now. And then we're going to override the connected callback lifecycle hook. So whenever this gets connected to the DOM, whenever it gets displayed, we want to do something. We need to remember to call super.connectedCallback just to make sure that the parent class has a chance to do its thing. But then what we can do is actually use a slightly more convenient syntax for accessing that. So we can mark this as an async, uh, async method like this. And what we can do then is we can call this dot message is equal to await get, uh, what was it called? Get greeting, get greeting like that. All right. And we can then use this template here to interpolate our value. So we can interpolate the value here, this dot message, save it. And what we'll see hopefully is that we have hello from the server. Now, just passing strings back and forth isn't all that impressive. Uh, you could do that pretty easily with with anything. So let's take a look at a passing some more complex data. So I'll create a class here, it can be a static class called let's say person. And for now, I'm not going to bother with getters and setters, I'm just going to use public fields for this. So public uh, string first name, and public string last name like that. So now we have an object that we want to uh, return from here. So I'm going to again, have a public method here that returns a person, get person, person like that. And then we can create a new person first, first of all, so var person equals new person, person like that. And then we'll just set some values here. So first name is equal to Marcus person dot last name is equal to Helberg. And then we'll return this person like so. And again, when we when we save that what's happening under the hood is that one is generating TypeScript types and wrappers for us. So when we get to our TypeScript file, we'll have a TypeScript person uh, type available to us. And we can import again this uh, get person accessor method. So we'll go in here and let's create a, another property for a person. Uh, let's call person. And here we can use actually the type here. And we can say that this should always be a person. And we can import that you can see it gets imported here from front end generated, and the path to our job object. And we'll initialize this to a empty value, we can use the person model, which is another thing that Vaadin generates to generate just an empty person that we can have to start out with. All right, so then we'll go into our template here. And don't worry about kind of understanding how lit element works too much. We have other videos, I'll link those in the show notes if you want to dive deeper into how lit element works. But what we can do now in our template is just access uh, things from that person. So uh, details of a person, and then we can just do a little uh, list here. So we'll have this dot person dot first name. And then we'll have this dot person dot last name like that. And we'll save it. And what we should see, hopefully, if everything goes well, is that we'll have details of a person here. Now, the reason we don't have anything is I forgot to actually call the server to get it. So let's go ahead and do that. So this dot person is equal to and then we'll again, await, 
get person like that. And hopefully this time if things go, uh, go well, we'll see the de details here. So that's how you can call uh, your Java server from TypeScript with the added benefit of getting type information and being able to pass even complex uh, object data. I hope this was useful for you. If you have any more ideas for videos or if you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.